Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I want to talk to you about how you can extract data from a PDF file and save that data to Excel. Now, I just want to let you know before you get into this tutorial, I'm looking at specific data on a PDF page. So there's specific fields that I'm going to extract here. I've got another tutorial that does data scraping, and with the data scraping, I pull out tabular data. So if you've got a table of data and you want to pull that data out and put it into an Excel, I'd suggest you take a look at that tutorial. If you want to pull out specific fields, in this case, I'm going to take a look at the invoice date. I'm going to take a look at the invoice total. I'm going to take a look at the invoice number, pull those fields out, and then create new rows inside of Excel based on that data. That's specifically what I'm doing in this tutorial. And if you need to do that, I think you'll really be impressed by how easy it is to do that with UiPath. A good place to start is always creating a new project. So I'm going to create a new project called Extract specific PDF data. And as that's creating, I'm going to show you the PDF files I'm going to work with. I've got these three files here, all in the folder named C orders. I'm going to copy that just because I'm going to need that in a second. And as you can see, it's got a number of line items here, and then each order's got some details I want to scrape out. Now, I actually did a scraping tutorial that showed you how to get all of the light line items and get tabular data out of an Excel file. In this example, I'm going to be focusing on specific data. So in this example, I want to get the invoice number, I want to get the invoice date, and I want to get the total, and I want to write those three fields for each of these different PDF files into an Excel spreadsheet. Of course, this is three files, but you could do it with 3,000 files once you've got it automated. And as you can see, each of these files all follows the same sort of pattern, although each of these files is completely different. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing you need to do is just open up your main workflow and add in a for each loop. And we need the for each loop just because we want to loop through all of the different files in that folder. So workflow command for each, drag that over there. And we have to use that directory object that's always available to us and call the get files method and pass into the get files method. Oh boy. Pass into the get files method the folder in which all of those PDF files are located. And I always like to call this file. For each file in that folder, let's go through them and process them. And geez, I just said process. So I guess that's the next step that we have to do. We have to actually have UiPath process each of those files. So there's a, an option called uh, start process. And where is that down here? System application start process is where you'd find it. I'm gonna drag that onto the page. And it's gonna say, what process do you wanna start? And I wanna start a process associated with each of those files. So I say file dot two string in here. Now that just kind of loads the file. I, I need to let UiPath know that I want to do some manipulation of this file using Adobe Acrobat Reader. And that means attaching that Adobe Acrobat Reader window to this process as well. Now this is danger fraught, okay? So pay attention here. I'm gonna drag that on. It's gonna say, which window do you want? I kind of have to move my entire environment around here so that I've got both Adobe visible and I've also got the attach window visible as well. I click the indicate window on screen and then I go over and I click on Adobe Acrobat Reader and now it knows to open that file in this particular program. Now there's a problem here. The problem is if you look at the selector and again you click on the hamburger look at the selector. The selector specifies the actual file that was in Adobe Reader when I clicked on it. You don't want that. Uh, if you leave that in, what's gonna happen is you're gonna try and loop over multiple files with different names and it's gonna say, uh-uh, I'm only looking at this file and it's gonna run into problems. So make sure you've got that deselected. Make sure it says omit for the title inside of there. Again, that's the attach window process. You click on the hamburger, it's edit selector, and make sure that title is deselected. The goal here is to get the invoice number, invoice date, and the invoice total into my program and then eventually write that to an Excel file. So that means I'm gonna need three variables at the very least. Each of these variables is gonna be put into sequence scope. The first variable is gonna be invoice name to type string. The second one is gonna be, well, not invoice name, invoice number. The second variable is gonna be invoice 
date. And then the third variable is going to be invoice total. So those are the three different variables I'm going to be using in my application. I need to extract them from this PDF file. And the way to do that is to add the, well, I guess I need to do an anchor. Add the anchor base activity, UI automation, element find, anchor base. I'm going to add this on here. And the anchor base is a two-step process. What you do is you say, you know what, there's a, a field there that's always going to be the same. Invoice number is the same on every single form. The actual invoice number changes, right? But the text string invoice pound, invoice number above it never does. So we can't get this element based on its name because the name is always changing. But we know that invoice number is always the same. So we can tell UiPath, look, go find that string in the file and then look for the piece of text underneath it. So in order to get the invoice number, what we do is we say, hey, I want to find an element. And so there's the find element option, UI automation, element find, find element. That's going to be my anchor. And it says, which element are you looking for? So I need to, again, kind of move these files so that I can see both the anchor base find element and the invoice. And I'll click indicate element inside window. And I want to make sure that, oh, this isn't, uh, this isn't holding properly. Hold on. I'm going to try that selector again, indicate on screen. And there we go. I just had to resize the file. Sometimes if, you, if the file's not uh, resized, it kind of doesn't understand where all the selectors are. Okay, so that is the find element. I want to find an element based on that invoice string. And what do I want to do? Well, I want to get the text that's underneath it. So now I have to find a get text method. There it is, UI automation, element control, get text. I drag that next to it. It says indicate what text you want. And there it's that text right underneath. Or oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. It's not that text. It is the text underneath the invoice number. And there we go. That should give me the invoice number. Now the anchor base, it's pretty good at guessing what text to get, but it can go to the left, right, top, or bottom. You should specify with anchor base. So there's this anchor position option. And with the anchor position option, I can specify, you know what, that anchor is actually on top of the value that I'm looking for, right? Invoice is on top of the value. And so you specify the anchor position to top. Now, the other thing you might want to do, just look at this selector and make sure the selector hasn't specified the PDF file. If it's specified an individual PDF file, it's not going to be able to find it. Um, as you loop through multiple ones. So I'm okay here, but sometimes if you actually put this anchor base utility outside of the attached window, you'll end up getting a, a little bit of a problem there. Now, when we get this text, I want to initialize that invoice number variable. And so on the get text there, that number is initialized to invoice number. So that completes that feature. Now I'm going to see, I'm going to take that anchor base. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it right here. And I'm going to paste it one more time. And so now I've got three copy elements. Now the second time that I do the paste, I actually want to find, well, what is it I want to find in my PDF file? I want to find the date. So I'm actually going to change this on the second one. And again, I got to have my PDF file visible. So I'm going to kind of move these around a little bit. And so the first one is the invoice date. The second one I'm going to indicate on, or the first one is the invoice number. The second one is the invoice date. And again, I'll indicate on screen for the date. And so now I've got one anchor base that's looking for, as you can see from the value, the invoice number. The second one now goes for the invoice date. I click on get text here. And now I don't want invoice number, right? I want invoice date, that variable there. And then for the third one, I want the total. 
And so under get tax, it's not the invoice number, but it's the invoice total. Okay, so that looks good there. Now again, I have to make sure that it's pointing to the right object on the page. So I'm gonna have to kind of move this around a little bit. Things are getting busy, but for this one here, it's not invoice number. This one is gonna be the total. So indicate on screen, there's total. And then right here, what is the field that we wanna get? Indicate on screen, it's the value underneath it. And there we go, at this point in time, we've now scraped those fields off of each page. And so we've looped through all the files in the directory, we scraped the specific data off of each page. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to save this to an Excel file. Now, how can we do that? Well, the first thing we need is a data table. And so we've got three fields here. What I need to do is build a data table. So I'm gonna drag this build data table function over here. I'm gonna create a new variable and I'm gonna put this variable in scope of the entire sequence. And I'm gonna call it my data table. And it will be of type data table, system.data.data table. And I'll make it in scope for the entire sequence. So this will create a data table. Now I can click on this data table option here. I'm gonna get rid of that first row, but I'm gonna add a row. Okay, so the third row here is going to be the, the invoice total. The second row I need to edit it because it's not going to be an int. It also is going to be a string, but it'll be the invoice date. And then the first column is going to be the invoice number. Okay, now this will create a data table. I then need to take this my data table variable here and set it so that the my data table gets that gets created gets updated to that variable so this dot this creates the data table this data table will then uh, initialize this my data table object so that should work properly and then the next step is just to append this data to the data table and so i can go in here take a look at the And it's not append, it's add. Add data row. Now it's gonna ask me what data table do I wanna add the row to? So I have to specify here my data table. And what is the row that I'm gonna add? Well, I'll just go in here and I'll specify that the data table that I'm adding is, and you just need this notation here, and it's gonna be invoice number, comma, invoice date, comma, invoice total. And that adds the data to the data row. And I always make sure you spell things correctly, and I think invoice total there, I think that's spelled correctly. Okay, and this will add the data to that data row. And now when we're done, we can add an Excel activity. So after adding this data, I'm gonna add an Excel application scope. This allows me to open up an Excel document and work on it. Now this project is called Extract Specific PDF Data. So I'm actually gonna go and find this folder, Extract, what is it called? Extract Specific PDF Data. Extract specific PDF data. And I'm gonna create a brand new Excel spreadsheet in here. And not a publisher document. A brand new Microsoft Excel worksheet. And I'm gonna call this my data. And I'm gonna copy that name. So now I've got an Excel spreadsheet in the projects folder. And on this page where I add the Excel spreadsheet activity, I can just print in the name of the file because I don't have to link to a relative folder. And what do I wanna do here? Well, all I wanna do is I would just want to append the data that's in that current data table to my Excel spreadsheet. And so in order to do that, I say append range, drag this over here. It says, okay, we'll add it into the Excel spreadsheet on sheet one. What data table are you interested in adding? 
And of course the data table is called my data table. And it will then append that data table to the end of the Excel spreadsheet. And so there you go, that's the basics here. What we do is we get our files in the direct, from the directory. We then open a process with them. We then attach them to Adobe Acrobat Reader. And then one at a time, we get first the invoice number, then we get the invoice date, then we get the invoice total. We then build a data table, add a single row to that data table that has all of those values in it, the number, the date, and the total. And then we create an Excel application scope activity. And in that scope, we open up the mydata.xlsx file, and then we append the range to it. And that's basically it. So I'm going to run this file. It's going to loop through all of these different PDF files. Loops through it again. Loops through it a third time. And then finally, when it's done, the process will be sent back to the UiPath Studio. And if I come in and take a look at this file that we created earlier, mydata.xlsx, you notice that it's got all the information from those three files in it. It's got the invoice number, the date of those invoices, and finally, the total of those invoices as well. Proving that I've successfully pulled from these three PDF files and saved into Excel. And there you go, that's how easy it is to extract specific data from multiple PDF files and then take that data and save it into individual rows in an Excel file. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please head over to theserverside.com. I've got lots of great tutorials over there on enterprise software development, UiPath, DevOps automation, you name it. And uh, if you're interested in my personal antics, follow me on Twitter, at CameronMCNZ. Oh, and subscribe on YouTube.